Hello everyone, my name is Dylan and welcome to another British English listening and speaking exercise. It's an absolute pleasure to have you here. So first we will start with the listening exercise. For this I'll be sat here drinking tea and reading you an original British story. Today we have one called Leapin Legends, Freddy the Frog's Time Travelling Tales. It's a story about a time travelling frog. I mean, what else do you want? I can personally promise you it's a very riveting tale. Throughout the exercise, I will be testing you on your listening abilities. As during the story, I will be randomly appearing to ask you questions based on the text that we have just read. After that section, we will move on to the speaking and pronunciation exercise which is designed to help you sound a lot more like a native speaker. So make sure to stick around for that as well. Right guys, well, best of luck, enjoy the story, and I will see you very shortly at the first question. Leapin' Legends Freddy the Frog's Time Travelling Tales Once upon a time, in a peaceful pond tucked away in the depths of a luscious forest, lived a frog named Freddy. Unlike his fellow amphibians, Freddy found the simplicity of his life insufficient. A yearning for the uncharted, for the thrill of adventure stirred within him. One night, beneath the dance of fireflies by the water's edge, Freddy's gaze turned skyward. The stars above twinkled with an inexplicable allure, and, in that very moment, he resolved to alter his destiny. Summoning courage, Freddy leapt into the cool night air and landed on an ancient stone, its surface smoothed by the touch of time. The stone emitted a gentle, otherworldly glow. Hello, hello, welcome to your first question. So, what was it that made Freddy the Frog want to embark on a new adventure? Was it A. He wasn't satisfied with a simple life? Was it B. He didn't like his fellow frogs? Was it C. A firefly dared him to? Or was it D. He wanted to become a famous frog model? Okay, and the answer is A. Freddy found the simplicity of his life insufficient. A yearning for the uncharted, for the thrill of adventure, stirred within him. And I think we can all relate to Freddy a little bit here. I mean, who wouldn't want to become a famous frog model? As Freddy's webbed feet met its cool surface, a surreal shiver enveloped him. In an instant, a vortex of energy engulfed Freddy, revealing the echoes of ages past. The stone, it appeared, was a portal, a passage through time. Without hesitation, Freddy took another leap, hurtling into the unknown. In the blink of an eye, his surroundings transformed. Familiar sights of the pond and forest faded, replaced by lively roads and towering structures. The air resonated with the hum of machinery and the chatter of 
humans. Eyes wide with wonder, Freddy realised he had leapt into a distant future, far removed from his home. Okay, question number two. According to the text, after Freddy stepped on the stone, what were the sites of the pond replaced with? Was it A. Machines that looked like humans? Was it B. A new forest? Was it C. Busy streets and tall buildings? Or was it D. Other time travelling frogs? Okay, and the answer is C. This is revealed on the 10th page where it says, In the blink of an eye, his surroundings transformed. Familiar sights of the pond and forest faded, replaced by lively roads and towering structures. So I really do wish Freddy all the best here because when it comes to busy roads, frogs don't tend to normally do so well. They sometimes become a bit flat, a bit um, two-dimensional, shall we say. Fueled by curiosity, he hopped through city streets, marvelling at the wonders of this uncharted era. He found himself amidst futuristic architecture, surrounded by towering glass buildings that reached for the sky. Gliding vehicles moved silently above, and holographic displays adorned every corner. Freddy's croak seemed strangely out of place, yet it carried echoes of his roots. As time passed, Freddy's temporal leaps became his new found odyssey. He traversed historical eras, witnessing monumental events first hand. He stood among roaring crowds during a historical speech, peeked over the shoulders of brilliant inventors, and even took part in a lively dance at a Renaissance fair. Throughout his journeys, Freddy encountered individuals who marvelled at his tales. Okay, question number three. And this is just a good question, to be honest. Okay, so according to the text, which of the following did Freddy not do during his big adventure? Was it A, he did not watch historic speeches? Was it B, he did not help with inventions? Was it C, he did not dance in a fair? Or was it D, he did not speak to people about his stories? Okay, and the correct answer is B. Freddy did not help with making any inventions. So, on the 17th page it says, He stood among roaring crowds during a historical speech, he peeked over the shoulders of brilliant inventors, and even took part in a lively dance at a Renaissance fair. So whilst there was mention of brilliant inventors, Freddy wasn't actually helping, he was just looking over their shoulders. And on the next page, it did say that he spoke to people about his stories. So the correct answer is B. He shared stories with wide-eyed children and engaged in conversations with wise elders bridging the gap between his amphibian world and the diverse tapestry of humanity. 
but admits the allure of the temporal tapestry, an unexpected offer came Freddy's way. He was discovered by a group of artistic frogs who admired his unique appearance and charismatic demeanour. They urged Freddy to become a frog model, a chance for him to become a face of frog kind in the ages to come. Okay, fourth question, and things are starting to get exciting. So, what was it about Freddy that got him an offer to become a famous frog model? The dream, am I right? Was it A, his amazing storytelling skills? Was it B, his artistic abilities? Was it C, his distinctive look and personality? Or was it D, his big frog muscles? And the answer is C. So according to the text, Freddy was discovered by a group of artistic frogs who admired his unique appearance and charismatic demeanour. So if you have a unique or a distinctive appearance, it means you sort of stand out and there aren't many other uh, frogs that look like you. That's a good chat line actually, remember that one. And if you have a charismatic demeanour, it means that you have a likeable or charismatic way about you or personality demeanour. So therefore, the correct answer is C. Tempting as the offer was, Freddy felt the pull of his pond tugging at his heartstrings. With a wistful smile, he declined the offer, choosing to return to his pond and his beloved forest. The call of home was too potent to ignore, and he longed to share his incredible experiences with his fellow frogs. In one final poignant leap, Freddy returned to his pond, his heart brimming with stories from eras long gone. As he shared his chronicles with fellow frogs, the pond transformed into a wellspring of imagination and awe. They praised his courage and tenacity and pledged to adopt some of the traits they so admired. And so, as Freddy lay down to rest that night, he cracked a big smile with the newfound confirmation that he is right where he belongs. The End So the final question is all about Freddy's brave decision to turn down a full-time frog modelling contract. Which, let's be honest, that takes some guts, right? I don't think many other people would have been able to turn that down. So, I would like you to complete the following sentence. Tempting as the offer was, Freddy felt the pull of his pond Something, 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 something. So, is it A, he felt it pulling on his hamstrings? Was it B, he felt it tugging at his heartstrings? Was it C, he felt it too potent to ignore? Or was it D, Freddy felt the pull of his pond biting at his legs? And your final answer is B. As tempting as the offer was, Freddy felt the pull of his pond tugging at his heartstrings. So if something is tugging at your heartstrings, 
it means it is causing you to feel very deep emotions, normally sadness or pity. So at the end of the day, Freddy turned down the glamorous lifestyle as a world famous frog model just to return to his humble life at the pond. And that's good, I think we can all learn something from Freddy here. Not me though, I would have taken that frog modelling contract like that. Well done, well done. Comment below and let me know your favourite animal. Why not, why not? Right, it is now time for the speaking and pronunciation exercise. For this I will read the story again, but at the start of every page I will give you the chance to pause the video. I then want you to have a go at reading what you see on the screen. You can then resume the video, listen to how I read and pronounce the text and you can practice that way. This style of exercise can be a great way to improve your speaking and pronunciation skills. However, if today you would rather just work on your listening skills then you are in luck because all you need to do is sit back, relax and enjoy round two of this riveting <laughs> story. Let's do this. Leaping Legends Freddy the Frog's Time Travelling Tales Once upon a time, in a peaceful pond tucked away in the depths of a luscious forest, lived a frog named Freddy. Unlike his fellow amphibians, Freddy found the simplicity of his life insufficient. A yearning for the uncharted, for the thrill of adventure stirred within him. One night, beneath the dance of fireflies by the water's edge, Freddy's gaze turned skyward. The stars above twinkled with an inexplicable allure, and in that very moment, he resolved to alter his destiny. Summoning courage, Freddy leapt into the cool night air and landed on an ancient stone, its surface smoothed by the touch of time. The stone emitted a gentle, otherworldly glow. As Freddy's webbed feet met its cool surface, a surreal shiver enveloped him. In an instant, a vortex of energy engulfed Freddy, revealing the echoes of ages past. The stone, it appeared, was a portal, a passage through time. Without hesitation, Freddy took another leap, hurtling into the unknown. In the blink of an eye, his surroundings transformed. Familiar sights of the pond and forest faded, replaced by lively roads and towering structures. The air resonated with the hum of machinery and the chatter of humans. Eyes wide with wonder, Freddy realised he had leapt into a distant future, far removed from his home.
fueled by curiosity, he hopped through city streets, marvelling at the wonders of this uncharted era. He found himself amidst futuristic architecture, surrounded by towering glass buildings that reached for the sky. Gliding vehicles moved silently above, and holographic displays adorned every corner. Freddy's croak seemed strangely out of place, yet it carried echoes of his roots. As time passed, Freddy's temporal leaps became his new found odyssey. He traversed historical eras, witnessing monumental events first hand. He stood among roaring crowds during a historical speech, peeked over the shoulders of brilliant inventors, and even took part in a lively dance at a renaissance fair. Throughout his journeys, Freddy encountered individuals who marvelled at his tales. He shared stories with wide-eyed children and engaged in conversations with wise elders, bridging the gap between his amphibian world and the diverse tapestry of humanity. But amidst the allure of the temporal tapestry, an unexpected offer came Freddy's way. He was discovered by a group of artistic frogs who admired his unique appearance and charismatic demeanour. They urged Freddy to become a frog model, a chance for him to become a face of frog kind in the ages to come. Tempting as the offer was, Freddy felt the pull of his pond tugging at his heartstrings. With a wistful smile, he declined the offer, choosing to return to his pond and his beloved forest. The call of home was too potent to ignore, and he longed to share his incredible experiences with his fellow frogs. In one final poignant leap, Freddy returned to his pond, his heart brimming with stories from eras long gone. As he shared his chronicles with fellow frogs, the pond transformed into a wellspring of imagination and awe. They praised his courage and tenacity and pledged to adopt some of the traits they so admired. And so, as Freddy lay down to rest that night, he cracked a big smile with the newfound confirmation that he is right where he belongs. The End (laughs) 
Right, everyone, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you like my face, my voice, or my teaching methods, feel free to like, subscribe, and check out some of my other videos. As always, please comment down below and let me know which country you are from. And until next time, cheers. That was a bad one. I messed that one up. Whatever. Thanks for watching.